Hi, this is David McCann for Elementor 360. Welcome to another 360 tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to look at the JetSmart Filters plugin that's part of the Crocoblock suite. JetSmart Filters is included in every plan in the Crocoblock suite except for the lowest tier. What's a filter? Here we have the posts widget in Elementor Pro. And when we look at the query, there's an option to include by. And then I chose term, which is a taxonomy term. And then the term I've chosen was category tutorial. So the widget's only showing the tutorials. That's a filter. Instead of showing all of the posts, it's just showing the ones that are tagged as tutorials. This kind of filter is including or excluding posts before they show on the page. But JetSmart Filters includes another type of filter, one that shows on the front end and that visitors can use to drill down and find the information they want. The front end filters are very interactive. When a front end filter is applied, it matches on the filter and excludes the items that don't match. Here's an example of JetSmart filters on the Crocoblock website. This is a WooCommerce page. And WooCommerce is one of the places where we often see filters. Here's a checkbox filter where you can check multiple items. Here's a radio filter where you can only select one. It's like the radio in your car. You can only be playing one station at a time. Then there's a filter type called indexer. In the back end of JetSmart filters, there's a place where you can index the posts or custom post type that you're using with the filter. This is a database index and the results are saved in the database. That makes the searching very fast, but it also means that anytime you add a new category or new content, you need to refresh the index. So here's one here, and this is another indexer filter. You can see you can display indexer filters as buttons or as checkboxes. Then there's a range filter, which is going off of the price. And in this case, you're manually setting up some ranges and tying them to a field. Then here's a rating filter, which is tied to the rating widget and matches based on the number of stars. A range filter is also tied to a particular field, in this case, the price. And you can use the sliders to adjust the range. A drop down, where you can only select one, but it takes up less space. A date range filter, in this case, probably based on the publication date. And Crocoblock also has the option for a color filter which is nice in cases like a store where if you had clothing that was different colors. This is something where you manually enter the hex codes for the colors and tie them to categories. Then there's an image filter, which is similar to the color filter. You're manually adding, applying an image to the category. Then there's a search filter, which we're all familiar with, where you're matching on a word or a phrase. And then there's a checkboxes filter. And unlike the checkbox list filter, this one is like a radio button. You can only choose one. I want to tie JetSmart filters to the Elementor Pro Posts widget. And this is my use case. On Elementor360.com, I report on the latest Elementor news, new plugins, updates, tutorials, and so on. I have a custom post type called News. And here you can see a single news article where I add some tags in the product taxonomy and a URL to the news. Here's a list of a bunch of articles, and you can see that here are the tags here. And the challenge is that some post widgets allow you to create filters, but they don't allow you to change the listing. And I needed to do that for this case. Normally what you have here is a read more button where you would go to this article. But instead, I wanted the button to go to the website related to the news article and not just to the news here. Because the news articles are short, there isn't anything else besides this. They're just small summaries so that you know whether you're interested to watch the video or read about it in more detail. As you can see, there are a couple of problems on this page. If we look at the pagination on the bottom, you can see that the number of articles is growing quickly. 
And while someone could just page through them, after a while, it just starts to look like a wall of text. There aren't any images here to break it up. It's not very engaging. Also, as you saw, each of the news articles has been tagged with some categories, but there's no way for the visitor to search. So what I want to do is use JetSmart filters to solve these problems. JetSmart filters can be used with Elementor Pro, Post Widget, Archive Widget, and WooCommerce widgets, and also with similar Crocoblock widgets. So you can use it in conjunction with the Jet Engine plugin, which allows you to create custom post types, custom fields, and listing loops. However, you can also use it standalone with Elementor Pro. There are two parts to setting up a filter. On the admin side, we need to define the filter type and what taxonomies it is tied to, or customize the search values it's going to use. And then in the Elementor editor, we need to use that filter and tie it to the post archive or WooCommerce listing that we want it to filter. So let's go through that process. When you install Enable Jet Smart Filter, you get an extra menu item here. And so let's click Add New. You give it a title, and you can give it some labels. These labels don't have to show depending on what kind of filter you want to use. And then here is a list of all those filter types, and you can choose the one you want. Then there's something called a query variable. And they list here a number of these, so you can put in these little magic tags or variable names here if you know, for example, on your WooCommerce page that you want to filter by price. In our case, we're going to use the checkboxes list. So as it says here, you don't have to deal with these variables if you're using something tied to a taxonomy. So now we need to choose the data source, and we're going to choose taxonomies. It's not tied to Jet Engine, and our taxonomies are flat. They don't have parent and child categories. And then the taxonomy I want to use is that products taxonomy that's tied to the news custom post type. And that's it. Let's publish that. And now let's go into the Elementor editor. This is the news archive where we want to add the filter. And this is the page that we were looking at on the front end now inside the Elementor editor. Let's go find the widgets for Crocoblock's JetSmart filters. As you can see, a lot of these widgets are tied to the type of filter you want to use. So you need to match the widget with the type of filter you set up in the back end. And of course, you can set up multiple ones. In some cases, you might use a radio filter, or in other cases, a rating filter if, if you tied it to star ratings. There's also an Apply button. If you don't want the filter to be applied immediately and want to wait until someone clicks an Apply button, there's an option to remove a filter or to uncheck a box or undo the filter. And then there's a pagination option. So we want to use the checkboxes filter. And I'm just going to drag that right above the list of news items. As you can see, nothing's showing here yet because we haven't yet selected which filter we're going to use. In the settings area here, we're going to select the news filter that we defined, and it lists out all the tags that are defined in that category. And then these are the types of widgets you can tie the filter to, potentially. You can see there's some for Elementor Pro, and then there's some for Crocoblock. In our case, we're using the Elementor Pro Posts widget. So we're going to apply that. We want it to refresh with Ajax when someone clicks or unclicks a checkbox. I don't need an apply button or to show labels. Now there's some instructions here. It's saying please set JetSmart filters into the query ID option of the post widget you want to filter. So we need to tell the post widget that it's being filtered to tie those together. Sometimes I've seen that your posts in the list here could disappear because this doesn't know yet. We haven't added this yet to the posts widget. So I guess we'll do that first. We'll go into the query, and you'll see there's an option here for query ID. 
which is what Elementor Pro uses to allow its default queries to be overridden programmatically. So we'll add this in so that we're tying the filter and the post widget together. Before we go much further, this doesn't look good. So let's go and edit this and the style and let's make it go across horizontally. That looks better. And then let's add some spacing between the checkboxes so that it's easier to tell them apart. And then just a little space between the checkbox and the label. And that looks pretty good. Now another thing we have to do is because we're using the filter, the built-in pagination of the post widget isn't going to work. So that's why the JetSmart filters comes with its own pagination option. So first let's turn off the pagination on the post widget. And then let's add the JetSmart filters pagination. We'll just drop that in there below. So let's style this up a bit. So I want to enable the previous and next buttons. And then this, I think when we get to a lot of, yeah, when we get to a lot of pages, it'll start to use these ellipses. So I added that there. And then let's see, let's center that. Let's add a background color to make it look a little bit more like buttons. And let's change the padding here a little bit. And then give them a border and a border radius and a border color. So that looks pretty good. Let's save and now go look at the result. Here's the latest news page. Great, we have our filters here. And and let's see. Oh, we have to set again what it's tied to. All right, let's save and go look at the result. Here's the news page. We see our filters and our pagination. Let's try filtering just on plugins. And we can see the navigation changed from four pages to two because we filtered down. Another plus with JetSmart filters is that it's very well documented. Here is their knowledge center and you'll see that all of these articles and some with videos are all about JetSmart filters and the types of filters. So there's a lot of documentation to get you going. In summary, most of the time, the front end filter options are tied to particular listing widgets, but the Jet Smart Filter widget is not. It's separate, and for that reason, it can work with the Crocoblock suite and with listing widgets that come with Elementor Pro. Jet Smart Filter includes a very large number of filters, seem like pretty much any type of filter you can think of. Many people want to use this with WooCommerce. But in my case, I wanted to use it with a news archive. I can see that needing to do two steps, one in the WordPress admin and another in the Elementor editor, might be confusing for people. But once you understand how JetSmart filters works, it makes sense. JetSmart filters solved my problems. It was pretty easy to use and very flexible. It's another winner from the Crocoblock team. So that's the video. I hope you found it useful. Check out other tutorials, reviews, and resources on the Elementor 360 website and sign up for the newsletter. Thank you for watching.